Hello, fifth graders. In this video, I'm going to be giving you tips on to excel at any presentation. This is going to apply to your upcoming presentations and any and all future presentations. These are tips that I give myself that I also wanted to pass on to you. I've categorized the tips into four different subjects. General tips that can apply to just about any presentation, uh, tips that are very specific to classroom presentations, tips that will more than likely just simply apply to online presentations, and then reflecting back to you the tips that you decided that you would give yourself upon seeing other people's uh, presentations as well as doing your first one. To start us off, we have our general tips. And my first tip here is do not write everything on your slides. More than likely, your audience can read faster than you speak. So what does that leave on your slides? Well, you can leave a hint or a reminder to both yourself and the audience of what you're going to talk about as well as you can have note cards in your hand or little notes on the PowerPoint screen, depending on how you're presenting, that help you remember your script of what you want to say. On your PowerPoint slides, you want to use clear text and diagrams. You don't want to clutter your screen. As you can see on this slide already, I have a very clear line of where my words are and a very simple picture uh, to help give a visual effect to the PowerPoint presentation. Because if it's just words, it looks a little bit more like an essay than a presentation. Okay. And lastly, for general tips, you want to speak, you do not, you do not, let me rephrase that, you do not want to speak with a monotone voice. You want to keep your energy high and excited because let's be honest, if I did a presentation like this all day for five days a week, you would be bored and you would hate it. You also want to make sure that you're speaking clearly. You want to make sure everyone in your audience knows exactly what you're talking about. You don't want to mumble over your words and you want to be able to pronounce all of the words that you are meaning to pronounce. What that means, hint, hint, is that you should practice. Practicing your presentation helps you become more fluent in what it is that you are presenting to your audience. It also helps you become much more aware of the order of your presentation and know how you can tell your story that is your presentation because believe it or not every presentation is a story in one form or another and finally smile it helps your audience relax and it helps you feel good about what it is that you're presenting so some classroom presentation tips uh, is just going to start off with make sure that you mention something that you learned in class that is relevant to what you are presenting in your presentation. Not only is this good and assures that there is information in your presentation, it lets the teacher know that you are actually listening in class, able to absorb and understand what it is that they are saying and that you are learning, and you can reapply that knowledge into your presentation. It shows a deeper depth of knowledge other than just spitting out like a word, uh, something that you may have just, or a definition of a word, something that you may have just memorized and you're just gonna recite. This ties into on the uh, previous slide when it was talking about speaking clearly don't hate your own voice. This is your presentation. It's OK to talk. It's OK to talk during your presentation. If there's a time limit, you do want to be aware of that. 
but don't hate your own voice. You may not like the sound of your own voice, but remember scientifically how you hear yourself is not how others hear you. You also want to stay hydrated. Take it from someone who knows it hurts to present and speak with a scratchy throat. And lastly, at the very beginning of your presentation, you want to do something unexpected or start with something that catches your audience's attention. You want to do something, again, either unexpected or say something that they can relate to. And a bonus tip is that if you forget what you're saying, don't panic, okay? That's what preparation is for. That's why you are prepared. And most of all, don't let your audience know that you have forgotten anything. Now, if a teacher is grading you, they might know that you forgot something because something may be missing uh, based off of the rubric. But if you forgot to do something, don't let the audience know. Also, don't tell the teacher that you did the presentation or you put together the presentation the night before. More often than not, that may or may not impact your grade. It did not impact you guys who confessed it uh, on your Explorers project or on your last one. It's just a general heads up. Most teachers don't appreciate students putting together a big presentation the night before because it causes some unnecessary stress and I'm sure your parents don't like it either. These next tips directly apply to doing presentations online in a virtual setting where we are just doing uh, video conferencing and you're going to be sharing your screen and sharing your PowerPoint and you talk about it. The first three are directly applied to video presentations. The last two tips you can apply to classroom presentations. In fact, I would highly suggest it. Okay, let's start off with our first one. You need to think about your setting. Think about where you are when you are presenting. Is it in a quiet, controlled area? What's in your background? Is your background distracting? Is your virtual background helping you or hurting you? And how quiet is it? Can everyone hear you? If you unmute yourself, will the audience be able to hear you or are you in a loud area? If you are in a loud area, I would suggest that you ask your parents if you can, at the time of your presentation, ask them if you can go into a room really quick that is quiet. Most families, when you give them a heads up that, hey, I'm doing a presentation, can we make sure that we're all quiet during this time? They will accommodate to your needs. If, for whatever reason, that is not the case in the um, in any situation, let alone this upcoming presentation. Let your teacher know and they can help you. The other thing I would suggest is to stand up if you can. One, we said enough already. Two, when you stand up, you will naturally deliver a presentation. Also, when you stand up and give a presentation, your shoulders tend to naturally go back, helping your head rise and look deep into the camera and give an air of confidence that you know what you're talking about. That all leads to a better presentation. And finally, to tie in with that last tip, have the camera at eye level. You don't want to be looking down at the camera, at your audience, and well, they will then be able to look up your nose. And to look up hurts your neck. You want to have it at eye level, and you want to make sure that your audience can see you. If you need to be aware of lighting around you, where like you base, and what I mean by lighting is that there's a, a brighter light behind you than there is one in front of you, which basically be, means you become an outline. OK, so be aware of that. Look at the camera. 
look at your slides. So long as it's at eye level, you are solid gold. That already puts you at a fantastic advantage point than most people in their presentations. OK, second to last, rehearse. Rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. And rehearse means practice. You want to set up the camera and practice in front of it. It is weird talking to a computer and no one else is there. I know I'm doing it right now. It's weird. Something that can help that no one else will know if you need a little secret is you can put a little face either just to the outside of your camera or you can put like one of your stuffed animals or a doll on the other side of your computer and it's right there, you can see it. But the audience can't see you. Therefore, it gives this sort of, it tricks your brain into thinking that you're still presenting to someone when you're really just talking to an inanimate uh, computer and your audience just happens to be able to see you and hear you, but maybe you can't see them. See how that works? I hope I've made that pretty clear. Also, if you have written visuals, such as a PowerPoint, please spell check it. Have a friend check it. Have an adult check it. Have a parent check it. I still get my presentations uh, spell checked by my friends and family. Just because I'm an adult does not mean I am great at presentations. Spell checking is just something that we naturally need to do because it's always good to get another eye on something that another person will see. And finally, this is another one that could apply to being in the classroom. Dress for the occasion. For me, it helps me to either dress up formally for presentation because that puts me in the right mindset. I'm not in baggy clothes. I'm not feeling too casual. I'm not being like, Ugh. it helps me wake up. It helps me get ready, it helps me go like in the zone, if you will. Or the other option is you dress up in a costume. Again, that puts you more in the zone if you're Doing a presentation on an explorer from the 1600s, dress up as an explorer. If you're doing a presentation where we're going off into space, into another planet, dress up futuristically. It's your choice. However you want to interpret and ready, better ready yourself for a presentation, dressing up really helps. It almost never affects your grade, but it helps your mindset and also tells the teacher that you are ready for this presentation. And finally, we have the tips that you guys all wrote after your last presentation. So some tips from your fellow students back to yourself are, uh, you need to choose a background that fits the presentation. Make sure that background makes sense and also is not distracting. You need to practice, practice, practice out loud not just practice in your head. Things sound differently when you practice in your head versus when you say it out loud. It's very similar to reading. If you read just in your own head, you're able to whiz through things and you can't even tell if you're mispronouncing something. But if you read out loud, it, may sa it sounds different and you can tell when there might be an error because it just it doesn't sound right. Make sure that everything that you talk about stays on topic and that you're not just showing random pictures from uh, whatever it is that interests you. If you're doing a presentation on, again, for as an example, the explorers, you probably should not be showing a picture from your favorite TV show. It's just an idea, okay? Make sure that your presentation has information that matches with your presentation. And also, it doesn't hurt to do extra research and find additional information for when people have questions at the end of your presentation. It's always good to have a few bits of information in your back pocket 
and it never hurts you. Make sure you make it fun, but not too fun so you don't get off topic. List your sources. Plagiarism is something where you copy someone's words without giving them credit. You can rephrase things, but remember, you didn't actually do a lot of the research, so you need to list your sources, usually in a bibliography, which we have talked about in class. If you have any questions about bibliographies, let me know and I'll do what I can to help you. Uh, third from the bottom is rehearse information so that you can understand and explain it. If you use a big word or a specific word that the um, there is a possibility that the teacher will be like, you used this word. Can you rephrase it or define that word for me? You need to make sure you don't just copy and paste. You need to make sure that you understand what you are saying and what you are talking about. Okay, and finally, uh, oh, not finally, second to last, you need to speak clearly and loudly. We are online, so the volume isn't so much the question because the microphone will pick you up unless your microphone's broken, which we can deal with at another time. But you do want to make sure that you are speaking clearly. Make sure you're not mumbling over your own words. I, as you can tell, stutter. I need to take some pauses sometimes. That's okay. Just make sure you are speaking uh, clearly to your audience. And then finally, you wanna make sure you speak with expression and excitement and not in one tone, otherwise known as monotone, which we have talked about. If you follow these tips, guys, I am very confident that you will excel in your presentations.